This flipped learning video looks at significant digits, scientific notation, and conversions. An expectation in this course is for students to be able to use and interpret significant digits or significant figures in measurements and calculations. These are sometimes referred to as sig digs or sig figs, but I'll use SD as a short form in our notes. Now in essence, sig digs communicate the confidence an experimenter has in their measured data. And good communication relies on standard conventions or rules. And the first rule of sig digs is if we record a digit, it's significant. But significance and certainty are not the same thing. Our last recorded digit is our best estimation given the measurement conditions. So this limits the precision of the measurement. But we should be reasonably certain of all the other digits recorded. This is true for zeros as well, but we have to add a few more conditions when it comes to interpreting their significance. Now first we have to recognize that zeros can be both significant or not significant depending on their function in the recorded value. For example, leading zeros are placeholders for very small numbers, but don't tell us anything about the recorded value, so these zeros would be deemed not significant. And for this, we can consider a measurement of 0.00325 kilometers to determine the number of sig digs. Now the 3, the 2, and the 5 are non-zero, so they're significant, but the 3 leading zeros just tell us how small the number is, so they're not, leaving us with 3 sig digs. Now trailing zeros when there's no decimal are also deemed to be not significant because they're just placeholders for large numbers. And for this case, let's consider a measurement of 1200 kilograms. Now again, the one and the two are non-zeros, so they're significant, but those two trailing zeros just tell us how large the number is and don't provide any information about the value. So this measurement would have two sig digs. Now if a trailing zero occurs after a decimal place, it is deemed significant because it provides no information about the value unless it speaks to the precision of the measurement. And for this case, we'll consider a measurement of 19.0 seconds, in which the 1 and the 9 are significant, but the 0 is also significant because we wouldn't write it unless we were certain of or could estimate its value. So this measurement has three sig digs. Now any zeros that lie between other sig figs once we've applied the previous rules are significant because rather than placeholders, they supply proper spacing between relative place values, providing significance indirectly to the other digits. Now for this one, let's use a couple of examples. We'll start with a mass of 1,021 grams. Now the 1, the 2, and the 1 are significant, so this makes the 0 significant because it's between them, giving us a total of 4 sig digs while a time of 2.00 seconds has a 2 and a trailing 0, making that 3 sig digs. And finally, a distance of 9.050 meters has the 9, the 5, and the trailing 0, making that middle 0 significant for 4 sig digs. And finally, if a measurement is precise enough that we can be certain of a trailing 0, but there's no decimal, we denote the significance of the most precise significant 0 with an overscore, a bar on top, and any zeros before this digit become significant due to rule D above. So let's reconsider our 1200 kilogram mass. If we know the precision to tens of kilograms, we denote this certainty with a bar above the first zero for three sig figs. You can pause the video here and practice, and we'll take them up when you're done. Now in the first example, all four digits are non-zeros for four sig digs, while in B, the first and last digits are non-zeros, making the three contain zeros significant for five sig digs. And for the third example, the two and one are significant while the trailing zeros are not, but the two contained zeros are significant for four sig figs. The fourth example has one sig dig because all the zeros are leading, while the two and trailing zeros in part E are significant, the two leading zeros leave this with four sig figs. And last but not least, part F has six sig figs because all the digits are significant. Now we often make calculations based on measurements, so we need to establish some mathematical rules for sig digs. Well, let's start with addition and subtraction. And the rule here is that the result of addition or subtraction can only be as precise as the least precise measurement. And again, we'll look at an example where we add 2.6345 seconds and 7.24 seconds to get 9.8745 seconds. But our least precise digit is the 100th of a second, so we leave the 100th place alone since the following digit takes us less than halfway to the next 100th of a second. This leaves us with 9.87 seconds. And if we subtract 18.5 meters from 420, we get a result of 401.5 meters. But our least precise digit holds the tens place value, limiting our resulting precision to a multiple of 10 meters. Looking at the next digit, we leave the zero alone. This gives a result of 400 meters with a bar over the first zero to denote the precision of the result. And now we'll consider multiplication and division. The rule here is that the number of sig figs in the result is limited by the lowest sig figs of all the measurements used for the calculation. Since any higher order operations rely on multiplication or division, this rule applies for everything else. And again, an example can illustrate this rule. 
We'll divide 4.3 meters by 0.00430 seconds to get a speed of 1,000 meters per second. But 4.3 meters has two sig figs, while 0.00430 seconds has three. This limits our results to two sig figs, so we place a bar over the zero in the hundreds place value. Significant digits are important because science relies heavily on making observations and measuring them. But the range of measurements we can make is mind-numbing. If we look at a scale from small to large, encompassing all that we can measure, the Planck length is theoretically the smallest knowable distance, while there is a limit to how far we can see in the universe. Interestingly enough, the scale of distances in the human body are almost smack in the middle, which makes us the center of the universe. Now that's pretty cool. So to see how small the Planck length is in meters, it takes a decimal point followed by 34 zeros and 162. And remember, all of those zeros are insignificant placeholders. But I'm not sure where my mind was at recording the original video, so you'll have to ignore that number. The farthest we can see in any direction is 46 billion light years, which in meters would be 435 followed by 24 zeros. A little closer to our experience, but still hard to picture, the Earth's mass in kilograms is 598 followed by 22 zeros, while the atomic radius of carbon, a significant component of life in meters is written with a decimal followed by 10 zeros and a 7. Well, we need a strategy to deal with this extensive range of numbers. So we've developed scientific notation, made up with a mantissa composed of the significant figures of the measurement, and the order of magnitude, a power of 10 to take care of those placeholder zeros. Now to write the mantissa, record the first non-zero digit, followed by a decimal point, and all the other significant digits for the measurement. While the order of magnitude, again, is a power of 10, where the exponent indicates the number of places the decimal moves. Positive exponents move the decimal to the right for larger numbers, while negative exponents move the decimal to the left for smaller numbers. And if the exponent is equal to zero, this just means that the decimal doesn't move, so the mantissa is the number. So the Planck length is 1.62 times 10 to the power of minus 35 meters. The radius of the observable universe is 4.35 times 10 to the power of 26 meters, despite the number on the screen while the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power of 24 kilograms, and the atomic radius of carbon is 7.0 times 10 to the power of minus 11 meters. A variant of this is engineering notation, which is similar to scientific notation, except the exponents are multiples of 3. This variant gives rise to the prefixes we use to simplify notation, where 10 to the power of minus 3 is written as milli, denoted by the letter m, and micro, denoted by the Greek letter mu, is 10 to the power of minus 6. 10 to the minus 9 is nano, 10 to the minus 12 is pico, 10 to the minus 15 is femto, and 10 to the minus 18 is atto. And for larger numbers, kilo is 10 to the power of 3, while mega is 10 to the power of 6. Giga is 10 to the power of 9, tera is 10 to the 12th power, and peta is 10 to the power of 15. An exception to the power of 3 condition is centi, which is 10 to the power of minus 2. So in engineering notation, the Earth's radius, which is 6,371 kilometers, would be written as 6.371 megameters. And the time it takes the light from this video to reach your eye is pretty close to 1.0 nanoseconds, or 1 times 10 to the power of minus 9. Now we have to recognize that measuring an object is performed by comparing a characteristic of it with some standard unit of reference. And we perform calculations with these measurements, like finding density, which is mass over volume. But mass can be measured in grams or kilograms, or sometimes even pounds, while volume units can be cubic centimeters or liters, cubic meters, or cubic inches. While speed is the rate of distance over time, with distance measured in meters, or kilometers, or miles, and time units including things like seconds, minutes, or hours. So what does it mean to say an object is 3 meters long? Well, if I take a meter stick and add another 2 end to end, I end up with 3 times the 1 meter stick. So implicit in 3 meters is 3 times the unit of measure we refer to as the meter. But what if we wanted to know that same measurement in centimeters? Well, this is where the skill of unit conversion comes in, where we multiply our measurement by a ratio of a number of B units to a number of A units, provided that ratio is equivalent to 1. So our 3 meter measurement, multiplied by a ratio of centimeters to meters, with 100 centimeters equal to 1 meter, will yield a result of 300 centimeters. Now centimeters to measure a distance is a base unit, whereas the result of a calculation is a derived unit. For example, the density of water, precise to the unit's place value, is 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter. Note the overscored zeros denoting the precision. And to convert this to a smaller unit, like grams per cubic centimeter, requires multiple iterations of the basic unit conversion. To convert the numerator to grams, we use a conversion factor of 1,000 grams for each kilogram. 
and to convert the denominator to cubic centimeters requires a conversion ratio of 1 cubic meter for 10 to the power of 6, or 1 million cubic centimeters.